Port forwarding your Minecraft server in 2023. That's what we're going to be covering in this video. Now, this is assuming that you have a server up and running on your own computer, and luckily, we do have a guide in the description down below that will show you exactly how to do that. Now, before we port forward, I want to quickly note that this is a server that's only meant for your friends, your family, people you trust. Anyone that you allow to join this server can DDoS you, which means basically kind of hit your internet offline and make it really inconvenient to use. And then on top of that, they can also figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. So it's pretty important that you only provide this option. IP address to people that you trust. If you do want to allow anyone and everyone to join this server, check out Apex Minecraft hosting at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex, and over there you'll be able to start your server and get things up and running in under five minutes with no port forwarding, and you can have anyone join your server, whether it's your friends, whether it's your family, whether it's just random people from the internet, it does not matter. Anyone who you want to join can join, and you can make your server public or private. That's up to you as well. So nonetheless, check out Apex if you don't want to have to worry about port forwarding, but otherwise, how can you do it? Well, first things first, we need to get your router's username and password. The reason is we're going to be logging into your router a little later in this video, and by figuring this information out on the front end, it can make things a lot simpler. Now, we do have a guide in the description down below on how to do exactly that, and it's actually kind of cool because instead of like step one, step two, step three, unfortunately, we have to kind of use methods. So I'll start with method one, talk to the person who set up your internet. If that doesn't work, check your router for a sticker. 90% of people probably find it in this step, right? For me, every router I've ever had has had my router's login information on the router itself. And then last but not least, try the default username and password from this website here. And then, nevertheless, you might need to reset your router to default info or even contact your ISP. But like I said, most people find it at this method and you're good to go, right? You've got it set up and running and, and there's no issues whatsoever from that point. Nevertheless, though, where do we go to actually port forward? Well, if we minimize our browser, we want to go ahead and open up the command prompt. So the little Windows icons in the top left of my screen, bottom left of your screen, or if you're on Windows 11, the bottom center of your screen, go ahead and type in in the Windows Explorer here. Is that what that's called? I think that's what it's called. Anyway, CMD. And then you'll have the command prompt. Open this up, and in here, what we want to do is type in IP C-O-N-F-I-G, IP config, exactly like that, IP C-O-N-F-I-G, all one word, all together, and hit enter. And this will give you basically a bunch of different IP addresses. We want two from this. So I always note, put these in notepad. You could write them down on a sticky note or a piece of paper. You just need these two numbers. So our first is this right here. This is our IPv4 address. Let's go ahead and do IPv4. And this is going to be 192.168.1.16. Now that might be completely different. It probably is completely different for you. And that's perfectly normal. So keep that in mind. If it's different, that's okay. We also need our default gateway. Now for our default gateway here, I have one number. That's it, right? Which is 192.168.1.1. But you may not have that. You may have two. You may have on the first line numbers and letters, kind of similar to these up here. And then on the second line, you might have just numbers. We want the one that's just numbers. It's not only easier to copy over, but it's just all we need for this specific port forward. So go ahead and copy the one that's just numbers. It might be on the second line, right? Like I said, like the default gateway, and then come down a line, and it's actually here, right on that second line. So copy that over, and we can go ahead and close out a command prompt. This is all we need. It is also worth noting at this point, I would stop your Minecraft server it's up and running. Um, we actually have one set up right here. It's a vanilla 1.19.3 server. Nothing out of the ordinary, but it's not running right now. It is stopped. That's not necessarily required, but you will need to restart your server before your port forward fully activates and all that. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and get our port forward going. So what we want to do is open up our browser and then open up a brand new tab. And then in this brand new tab, what we want to do is type in up here at the top where you would normally type in the breakdown.xyz, youtube.com, or Google something, right? Right up here at the top, what we want to do is type in that default gateway. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.1 and hit enter. It's going to open up some sort of a login box. Now for me, it pops up from the top, right? Like kind of pops in. For you, it may be in the center of your screen. And unfortunately for some of you, it might not work. And... There could be a few reasons for this. One, make sure you dig at the default gateway that was correct. You know, make sure you double check all that. Look at all that. Two, if you are on a router that is controlled by, let's say, your school's Wi-Fi or something like that, you may not be able to log in here to your router. It just may be cut off completely and only be accessible from certain computers. And so because of that, you kind of can't port forward and you won't be able to allow your friends to join your server. That's where someone like Apex comes in. They solve that problem. But nevertheless... You might also be asked to download an app. And unfortunately, this is the downside of making a video like this that covers 
potentially thousands of different routers that are out there. For example, Google Wi-Fi routers require you to do just that. Download the Google Home app and port forward through that. You can do everything through that, but you will need to download the app at this point. Usually there's like a QR code or something you could scan it with your phone to download and then log into your router. Nevertheless, though, we can go ahead and enter in our router's information, which we found back here. Well, again, the link in the description down below. And we do have this guide, which goes through port forwarding on a lot of specific routers. I'm not going to do that in this particular video. My goal is to help you get people joining your server and give you common terms and things like that and where to kind of look in most routers for port forwarding. But if you want specific examples, that's where this video comes in. And it is, of course, linked in the description down below. By the way, if there is a router missing or something like that, feel free to let us know. I'm actually thinking about redoing this video in the future. So if this would be the time to let me know if you think there's a router that we've missed that you would like to see us do. But now let's just go ahead and enter in our router's username and password here. And then once we log in, I will see you to uh, show you how to port forward on my router, but also give you the common terms and locations that port forwarding could be on your router. There we go. We have now logged in and just like that, things start loading in and most likely it's going to look completely different for you than it does for me. And that's okay, right? The reason being is because I'm going to give you a lot of the terms, a lot of the places that you need to look for port forwarding. And guess what? If you click around your router and you break something, that's okay. Because one, you could just reset your router to default, but most likely you're not actually going to break something because it's going to ask you to save. And as long as you don't save anything other than port forwarding, that's okay, right? You're not going to break anything. You're not going to have any issues. And like I said, should you have any issues, you can simply just reset your router to default settings. Most likely if you've never really gotten into your router before, you're running the default settings anyway, and, and it's not going to be an issue to reset those should something break. But this really should not scare you. Like I said, it's going to ask you to save anything, and as long as the only thing you're saving is the port forward, it's not a problem at all. But nonetheless, for me, it's in advanced. Then it's going to be in the advanced tab again, and then port forwarding slash port triggering. Now, for you, it may be in apps and gaming. It might be in port forwarding slash port triggering, as it is for me. It may be in the advanced tab, the administration tab, the other features tab. That's a weird one. Security. It could be called NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be called NAT Gaming, N-A-T Gaming. It could be in your firewall settings, right? Because what port forwarding is, is allowing something through the firewall. So it might be in your firewall or security settings. Common ones are apps and gaming in the advanced tab or administration tab. And then NAT Gaming is uh, something that's somewhat popular as well or NAT forwarding, N-A-T forwarding. Nevertheless, we've now found though port forwarding. Click around your router. It's okay. Like I said, if you click on something and, 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 and it feels weird, just click away from it. As long as you don't change anything, there's no issues that'll happen from that. And um, yeah, we can get ready to port forward once you have found the location. Now, there's usually three things that could happen with a port forward. So you might have an add port forward plus create something like that under the port forward menu, or you may just have a big list of empty boxes that kind of go, I don't know, you might have 20 of them, 50 of them, something like that. If you have the empty boxes, well, then go ahead and uh, just start entering the information we're about to on the next kind of part of this video. If you don't have the empty boxes, you can go ahead and add a service, create a port forward, new port forward, things like that. Whatever it says to add a port forward, go ahead and do that. Now, for service name or ID or name or identifier, it could be anything. All this is is what is this port forward for? Well, it's for a Minecraft java edition server now for the protocol this is going to be one of really two options first could be tcp slash udp like it is for me the second could be both and it could also reverse it could be udp slash tcp any of those are good now if for whatever reason you don't have the option to select both of these it's becoming increasingly uncommon for that to be the case but if for whatever reason you can't just repeat every part of this video right here in the port forwarding process and do it twice. Do it once for TCP, change the name up here to TCP, right? And then do it again for UDP. But we don't need to do that because, well, we can do both by selecting TCP slash UDP. Now, for anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, external port, internal port, inside port, outside port, first port, second port. It does not matter what the term before the word port is. Enter in 25565. That's what it's going to be for any port 
related thing. So external port. Hey, there's that port. There's all we need. The word port. It's going to be 25565. For internal port. Hey, see the word port. I don't have to think about anything else. I can come over here and enter in 25565. Whatever your router calls it, it does not matter. It's going to be 25565. Now, for internal IP address, inside IP address, local IP address could also be something this is called. It could also be called device, which is a little weird, but it could be called like device and be a drop down. I have an example of both, which is one of the reasons I kind of like this router for, for teaching this. Right here we have 192.168.1. That's familiar. This is actually your IPv4 address that you want to enter in here. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.16 for your internal IP, local IP, you know, inside IP, there's all sorts of things it could be, but nevertheless, you wanna enter in your IPv4 address. Now, if you have a dropdown of devices on your com that are on your network, basically is what that is, you wanna select the device you're starting your server on. So for me, it's gonna be this here, desktop, that's what this computer is, but we can see the IP address is the same as the IPv4 address we got earlier. So I could also come down here and click on it here. Either way, it's gonna give us the same result. But if you do have the dropdown box of devices, Go ahead and select the device you're starting the server on. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and click apply, and now the port forward is going to save. That's it. That's the hard part, is getting to that point right there where the port is forwarded. Now, should you be watching this and wanting to use Bedrock Minecraft, you're going to want to forward twice. Two ports, once for 19132, and again for 19133. Most of you, I'm guessing, are starting a Java server, though, so you won't need to worry about that. But if you are watching this video for Bedrock, those are the two ports that you want to forward, 19.13.2 and 19.13.3. But nevertheless, what do we do to actually go ahead and get our server up and running with a public IP? Well, first, let's go ahead and start the server. Uh, as you can see here, we have our folder already created. We can open this up and just double click on the server.jar, your run.bat file, start your server. However you normally start your server, just go ahead and do that. Now, in the past, some people would have told you to open up your server.properties and enter in your IPv4 address next to server-ip equals. In some cases, if you're having issues with the port forward, that can fix it. But 99% of the time in 2023, it's it's not needed anymore. So I usually just skip that step. We help millions of people start Minecraft servers, and um, we never really have issues with leaving that blank. But I have seen some comments saying, I thought you used to change this. And you did used to, but you don't really need to now. Our server is started, as you can see. I'm also going to go ahead and open up Minecraft. And then once we've got Minecraft open, we can grab our public IP address and join really, really simply using that. However, once we do that, I do want to make some mentions as to who can join via your public IP. So there we go. Minecraft is open. And now what we want to do is go back to our browser and for you back to this video and click the what's my IP address link. And that will take you here. This is our website where we just provide to you your public IP address. Now, once you're here, you can just click on that public IP and copy it. But it's worth noting. You can see what people can get from this. Your latitude and longitude coordinates, your region, your city country and with this IP address they can also DDoS you send tons of traffic at your router and basically hit you offline so very very important because this is a public video you can only see the last three digits 177 that will be mirrored in Minecraft so you know we're not playing any trickery on you but overall that is something that is worth noting and it's why you can only see three digits by the way Apex Minecraft hosting does fix that issue like I said in the beginning of the video with Apex anyone can join your server and you don't even need to pour forward nevertheless let's minimize our browser here and come back to Minecraft Click on multiplayer, proceed, and then once we're here, we want to just go ahead and direct connect. You can add this server as one of the servers here, for example, but we want to go ahead and just direct connect because we're testing. Once we click direct connection, we can just paste in our public IP address. Now, again, all you can see is 177, but it is the 177 we saw earlier in the video, the same IP address. When we click join on the left-hand side, we'll see it pop in. Now, unfortunately, we also do have to uh, white out some of the console because the public IP address shows in the console as well. So that is worth noting and something to keep in mind. You know, if you're ever, for whatever reason, showing your server console, you shouldn't do that because it will, you know, expose the IP address of anyone who joins your server. But here we are. We are online. Now, I can join via my public IP. My friends can join via my public IP and all of that stuff. In some cases, though, you won't be able to join via your public IP, and your friends will. If that's your issue, that's okay. You can join using the IP address localhost. So we go ahead and disconnect here, and then we direct connect again. This time, what we want to do is use localhost as the IP and click join server. We'll join the server on the left-hand side, as you can see. Did have to still do some whiting out because that public IP is still there from the last time we joined, but 
we can see that we are in the server now and it's the exact same server we were just in. You should honestly always join off a local host. Your friends are the only ones that have to join off of that public IP. But what if they can't? Well, it could be a few specific issues that's causing them to have issues. The first is, well, you need to allow Java through Windows Defender. Luckily, we've got an in-depth guide on this in the description down below. It's now helped over a quarter of a million people in the last two years to allow Java through Windows Defender and allow people to join their Minecraft server because of them this being the issue. So if for whatever reason, whenever you started your server or when you started playing Minecraft, you denied public and private networks access to your computer, then your server won't work. And this video shows you how to fix that going through everything. Also, we have this, which is our 20 minute amazing video that goes into Minecraft server issues. Port forwarding issues are covered in this video. So go check that out if you do have other issues and want to figure out different ways that you can get things solved and taken care of. Nevertheless, though, you now know how to port forward your Minecraft server. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. We're happy to help and be, feel free to join our support Discord, which is in the description down below as well. Nevertheless, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Enjoy your server, and I am out. Peace.